Okay, so onto the roughness map then. So first thing we're going to do is add a new folder, call this paint, and add a new layer into that. Um, so what we're going to do is just, if we just have a look at our model here, see the way the paint is basically perfect, and with all this wear on it, you're going to expect there to be a lot more, um, a lot more kind of wear and tear on on the paint. So if we just jump into our back into our roughness map, we'll go to brushes here, and you can see um, I've got another brush made here. And uh, what this one does is just we pick something a bit darker than that, and we go down to about that kind of roughness value. You can see it's just adding some kind of break up to that surface. So. Um, just to show you the brush itself, if we go to brush tip shape, the font one I'm using is this one here. Um, shape dynamics, got quite a lot of size jitter, and I'm using my pen pressure for the minimum dia diameter. And I'm scattering this quite a lot, so a massive amount on kind of both axes. Um, dual brush, I'm using this brush here. See I've got the size set and a bit of scatter on that as well. Obviously you can preview it down here. Could do that on both axis, but I think I'll just leave it off. And transfer. I'm not doing anything anyway, so I might as well take that off. Um, okay, and then I am using the mouse here just to add some detail to this. So you can see, let's just roughly throw that in there and then just save. So notice what I've done is I've left the metal map above it, so I'm only painting onto the actual paint layer here. So you can see when you rotate, I'm already getting that finer detail. Obviously where it's darker, it's going to blur the reflections even more. And that's probably the kind of thing I'm looking for here. So I do already prefer that, but let's be a bit more precise about it. So rather than just painting any, anywhere, you might want to think, well, it, the paint is going to break up more around where the um, around the, where the edge wear is. So maybe I should be using my Wacken for this as well. Let's see to my mouse there. And um, maybe I'll just put the bend in a minimum diameter a bit smaller. No, I'll just leave that as is. Always just paint the details out if we need to. So, you know, I really am considering where. paint would actually have faded out a bit. Okay, so when you rotate round you can see that kind of detail now having an effect. Okay, so we'll add another new layer in, and this time what we're going to do is use some of our scratch layers that we made before. Obviously these are far too big at the moment. Okay, so again we'll have to come in and tweak this, so we'll put Shape Dynamics on Want some different sizes to the scratches. Uh, we definitely want quite a high minimum diameter. We definitely want to scatter these. Put the count down a little bit, I think. 
And uh, let's just have a quick look to see if we can get. I don't think we'll find a nice jewel brush for this, but it might be worth a go anyway. So let's make this quite a bit darker. Make sure you're painting on a new layer. We'll get those additional kind of scratch marks around our paint. So again, some of the stuff I'm doing here, I'm actually just testing some stuff out. So unlike some of the ones before, I haven't got like a defined thing that I want to achieve with this. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so we can see that those scratches having a nice kind of impact on our on our roughness map there. I quite like that actually. So maybe we'll we'll keep that particular effect in. Um, obviously this isn't the most kind of extreme. As soon as you're out here you're not really noticing what that roughness map is actually doing. And um, I don't mind that, I quite like the having I mean, some subtlety to it. Obviously if you're showing this kind of model in your portfolio, as you rotate round and it catches the light, you will get that nice kind of impact from the from the roughness map. Um, obviously another thing you can do is like if we just crank our levels on top of this. really like exaggerate the roughness and then just save that. You'll see you can ramp that up and have it have more effect anyway so obviously now it's a lot kind of clearer than it was before anyway. Okay so one thing our metal is looking a bit shiny for what um what it actually what it actually is so let's try decreasing that metalness value and I might even try let's try even blurring that out a little bit so okay so we'll color pick on there and just wrap that down somewhat click on that layer and fill that layer and make sure you fill it in with the right color ah right now the reason why that's happening is because I have that levels affecting it so I'm going to put the levels above uh, the metal above that and then save this There we go, so we blurred that. Blurred that value out a little bit now. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is stick some of that roughness detail just onto the albedo. So, um, what we could even do, if we just see what's in, we've got all the right layers there. Yeah, so we can delete this layer here. So with our paint layer here, if we just duplicate this group and send this over to the albedo, so we see that's already, so I've got that on there quite nicely. Um, what we can do is just convert these into one layer with Control and E. And what we'll do is do image adjustments invert and I'll show you a slightly different way to create a mask if you hold control and left click that will select all that and then do a new layer and put a mask in there and you can see it just makes it straight into a mask for you so we can now bin that off and now in this what we want to do is just think about do you want a slightly like different colour tint in there, something like that. Only has to be subtle obviously. Now obviously what we don't want it to do is sit over the metal works, we don't want it to affect affect that. So what we'll do is we'll grab our metal and just put that above it like that. 
So if we do save, make sure you obviously save in the albedo. Jump back into here and you can see we've got that kind of slight colour variation on there now. So a little bit of fade. It might be that that's just a little bit too orangey in colour. Maybe I'll try something like that instead. Now that's looking, looking a bit better, I think. Okay, so one other thing we might want to do is well, first of all, we can delete that out of there now. One other thing we might want to do is take some of these paint chips, so probably just the chips themselves and put those onto our normal map. Um, and then we're going to use Endo just to add these to the normal map. Now the first thing you want to do is add a new layer in and fill that in with white and then merge these down. So look, now we've got a nice layer that we can use in Endo. Uh, so remember of course you can use one of the presets or you can just convert it yourself. So Let's just use one of the presets. I like to mix. Let's mix this up a little bit. So um, we'll see if it's got <coughs> anything for metal. So maybe scratch metal would obviously be the ideal one. And we'll see how that comes out. Whoa. I wouldn't say it's interpreted this exactly as we wanted it. And one thing we did do, we did it the wrong way around, so we are going to have to come in and just change, if you just double click and change the slant of all of these to up. So double click on there and go slant up. And the reason we've done that is because we should have had, we should have had it the other way around in terms of the initial colours. Okay, so let's just zoom in and have a look at that. See, they look a little bit excessive to me there. That node isn't really doing much anyway. You can turn them off with these here. And that's the one we really want, this fine scratches. So we'll try just turning the depth right down. So really, we only want it subtle like that. So then we will flatten these out, control A and control C to copy, and turn this off and just paste this over our original one. And I'm just going to actually just scrap that off completely just, just to um, keep our files nice and clean. So remember we paste white in our red and green and we paste 50% grey in our blue channel. White one is set to multiply, blue one is set to overlay. So we just save that out and I imagine that's going to be quite excessive to start with but it might not be too bad. Actually, that's come out reasonably nicely. So one thing you can see, the scratches have actually applied to the metal underneath as well. We probably don't really, really want that. And that's simple enough to take out. I might as well show you how to do that. So if we just select our metalness mask and copy that. I'm going to bin that off. Um, go to our normal map. And this is our, our chips layers. If we just add a mask onto that, alt and left click to go into it, control V to paste and do image adjustments invert. And the same on this as well. and control eyes the shortcut. 
and now you can see those scratches won't be applied to the metal now. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Uh, one last thing we might want to do is add some breakup to the metal itself as well. Uh, so for our metal its map, we might as well just use a kind of similar brush to. Uh, sorry, for our, the metal roughness, we might as well use a similar brush to what we were using before. Uh, make a new layer. Hold Control and click on our mask for our metal and add that as a mask and then what we'll do is colour pick on this grey oh, because I'm on the mask it's colour picking from uh, the mask so make sure you've got the layer selected and then colour pick and we'll do this slightly slightly kind of darker And we'll just add some variation into this. So this is the, obviously all these little bits are where, because it's got darker on the roughness, where the reflection will be kind of more blurred. Okay, so that should do. So let's just save that out. It'll only be a subtle difference, but that's all good. So I think. Obviously there's other little things we could add to this. Um, it'd be quite nice to have some kind of decal on here. That'd be a good thing to add. A um, bit more detail in the albedo map. A um, bit more detail in the metal map for the roughness here. Um, but other than that, I think this has been a pretty good demo of how to kind of use your metalness map to get two different materials on one kind of simple, simple model. So um, yeah, I think that's the end of that tutorial. So you should now have a nice kind of set of models. So yeah, we've got our gold material, um, which was using the different low poly with a different normal map. Uh, we've got our chipped metal material that we've just made got our wood material with the um, detail kind of bump map and we've got our plastic material as well. So you should have four kind of pretty reasonable materials by the time you've done all these tutorials.